Hello everyone out there in YouTube land. I just wanted to show you my latest project. And could it be that I've made the slimmest CD player anybody ever made? I don't know, it's possible. I did an awful lot of searching when I was trying to uh, uh, figure out what I could do with my Klipsch stereo here. So I've got this uh, Klipsch the three and it's a beautiful unit. Uh, it's got a real walnut finish to it. It's got some copper knobs on it. And uh, it works really nice here up in the living room where I don't wanna have a big bulky stereo set up like I do down in the basement, just to have something nice to listen to. But I also thought it would be cool to have the CD playback functionality, you know, so this thing has a lot of inputs. It has uh, uh, USB audio input. It has a uh, phono input for a record player. It has uh, just an auxiliary input for whatever else you want. Bluetooth, of course. It has a Wi-Fi function, although I don't find it to work too well with their, their app. But what if it could also do CDs? So, I thought, okay, well, if I do that, I want to be able to take the CD play. I want it to be something that's attached uh, so that when I take the stereo elsewhere, if I take it outside or to the cabin or something like that, it's also going to come with it and not have this whole separate thing. So, okay, how do I do that and not wreck the look of it? So this is what I thought of. So you see down here on the bottom, <laughs> this is the CD player. I thought, you know, if I could squeeze some sort of CD player maybe underneath this thing in between the feet, then it would basically disappear when not in use. You know, you wouldn't really see it much. And so I got to thinking, well, how could I do that? So I started looking on eBay and uh, Amazon and whatever. Okay, what are some of the smallest CD players and, and you know, what, what, what could I find? And there were a lot of things that were just, they're kind of thicker, uh, things that are more like uh, Discmans and stuff like that. Uh, that wouldn't have worked. That definitely would have had to sit on the side or, or on top or something like that. Um, but then I had a, an idea. I'm like, you know what? Downstairs in the basement, I've got one of those uh, uh, external slim DVD drives that uh, it's new in the box. I had no purpose for it or anything. I'm like, man, that thing would fit underneath. So then I went ahead, grabbed it, unboxed it. I slipped it underneath here and lo and behold, well, yeah, certainly that would fit. But the problem is interfacing that to here. Now you're not going to get audio out on one of those external drives. And even if you did get audio out on it, like it had a headphone jack or an auxiliary, it's going to most likely have a terrible digital to analog converter in it because it's not designed for this purpose. It's just going to be so you could hook your headphones up. But even so, I never saw any of those that had it. Mine certainly didn't have it. All it had was a USB port on the back uh, to be hooked up to a computer. Okay, so you wanna hook it up to a computer, hey? Well, what's a small computer? Well, the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi is a small computer. I could probably jam that underneath too. And so that's exactly what I did. Now I haven't attached this to, this to the underside of this yet. I've got some double-sided tape on here. Um, but for right now, and for the sake of demoing this, this allows me to pull this whole thing out. I don't want to wreck it here. So, so I'm going to pull this thing out of here and see it's nice and slim. And there it is. So what I've done here is I've modeled and 3D printed uh, in this kind of copper color to try to match the stereo, uh, this enclosure. And I've taken a Raspberry Pi 3 that I also happen to have. And what I've done is it would have been too thick with the ethernet ports and the double height USB ports that are right here. So I've desoldered those, gotten rid of them. And now that brings that thing down to be real nice and slim. And, uh, and then I was able to solder the USB connection into here and the uh, USB connection that goes from here, this is a great thing, is comes out of here, goes into the back of the stereo 
as USB, so it keeps the signal digital until it goes and uses the much nicer quality digital to analog converter built into here. So I'm not putting that load on the, the CD player, I'm allowing it to happen here. But to do this, you have to have the software to glue it all together. And uh, so that's kind of the next part of it was configuring the Raspberry Pi to not only recognize the drive, uh, recognize the stereo here, defaulting to always use this as the sound device, but um, also uh, having some interface or have some way to play it back. So in my case, I'm using uh, VLC. I'm using uh, completely uh, the command line interface on the Raspberry Pi here. So, um, so it doesn't have the uh, the operating the graphical operating system running or anything like that. It's just what's needed to survive. Just enough to play the CD, pass it bit perfect, uncompressed through the USB up to the stereo. And then also, I wanted to be able to use the original Klipsch remote. Um, and so what I've done is put an infrared receiver here and tied it to the general purpose IO pins here and run another service to look for particular commands and learn the commands of this remote so that the play next back uh, pause like all of this can be used to control the CD. This part I've been struggling with because I think I fried my sensor by wiring it up backwards when going from uh, my original idea, which was the Pi Zero to this one, uh, which by the way, the Pi Zero did not seem to have the horsepower to play smoothly with the playback. So I had to abandon the idea. And as it was, it only has one USB port. So you have to add a hub anyway, which then like doubles the size of the device to fit inside here. So why do I have two different components in here? and I'm having playback issues. So let's just go to the full powered uh, Raspberry Pi. <clears throat> and uh, and that's what I did. So so anyway, so I'm still smoothing out this side of it, but I, I am very confident that I will get this part of it working, but it's just a matter of, you know, when I'm in uh, USB mode here on the stereo, so you can hear it playing back, but I'm switchly going to change it because I don't want any copyright strikes or anything like that. Um, yeah, I just uh, will be able to uh, use this for the volume and changing modes and stuff like that. But then when I'm on this mode, I'll be able to use this to control playback. Right now, if I go uh, onto my phone um, uh, using a, a, a terminal application like a SSH terminal, I can control playback and stuff like that right now. So I'm still working on this, but I was excited to show this off just working and uh and as it is here so yeah um let's take a look at what we've got around back here um so we've got the uh the power cord right here this has to be powered externally and then we've got our uh, usb cable coming out and then i've left accessible uh the hdmi port in case and uh the the analog uh, audio output as well if necessary so I can take this along and plug it into other devices and I could use this analog port you know for example on my other smaller portable stereo or anything really and uh, yeah so I just thought it was uh, really neat it sits back under here I can kind of cram this back in I'm trying to do this with one hand and a camera in the other hand like this and we get this and that's how it's supposed to look and then you can press the oh, I can't get my hands on it <laughs> but once this is all glued in place then it'll be perfectly still so there you go there's the disk drive that's that's what it would look like just like that and you've got yourself a CD playback on your clips the three and that's pretty much it. I'll uh, update you if I uh, do any more, but uh, I'm mainly getting this working 100%. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching.